Joining me now to discuss the chances for a deal on national security, including the border, is Massachusetts Democratic Representative Jake Ockett. I'm, I knew I was going to get it wrong ten times, Congressman. You have to forgive me. Jake Auchincloss, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Um, okay, so the, set the frame for us. When we talk about uh, the broad bipartisan consensus that we have around the idea of support for Israel, support for Ukraine, and support for border funding, from the outside, it looks to a normal human being like there should be plenty of support for that. Uh, is that really going to happen? It should. And as you say, there's broad bipartisan support for all the things that Congress needs to do on behalf of the American people, uh, not just border security and Ukraine, but also funding the government at the levels agreed to between Speaker McCarthy and President Biden last year. It's never been a math problem in this Congress. We've always had 300 plus votes in the House and 60 plus votes in the Senate to do all the necessary things. It's not a math problem. It's a MAGA problem. And the MAGA problem is that Donald Trump wants to campaign on the border, not govern on the border. And House GOP is too afraid of him to buck that political uh, imperative. OK, so it is certainly true that Republicans uh, have the problem you described on the border. And it's certainly true that Republicans are divided on the question of support for Ukraine. Democrats are divided on the question of Israel. And uh, as President Biden was kicking off his general election campaign down in Georgia, uh, he followed by protesters and outrage. You've said before that you think of these folks, uh, the anti-Israel faction in your party, as a, as a vocal but small minority. Uh, but this does represent a problem in an election year for the president, doesn't it? It's a false equivalence, Ukraine versus Israel, right versus left, because on the Republican side of the aisle, the division over Ukraine is now their dominant position. They have submitted to Donald Trump's sympathy to Vladimir Putin, and their opposition to supporting Ukraine is directly impeding the passage of that bill. Whereas on the Democratic side of the aisle, party leadership, Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, as well as the supermajority of the party, are in support of Israel's right to defend itself and of hostage release as a necessary element of securing a temporary ceasefire. And if you look at the results from Super Tuesday, where you know, the pro ceasefire now candidate in California failed to, to break double digits, uh, where the president swept to a resounding victory, it's really just not a meaningful impediment to the president's ability to pass his agenda or to rally his base, whereas Ukraine has absolutely plundered the Republican Party's ability to govern. Uh, okay, uh, turning now to some legislation that you have cooking, uh, which came out uh, with unanimous support of, uh, in the House of, out of committee, which is, uh, to, and you can walk us through this, but basically it says that TikTok, the most popular website basically in the United States, certainly the most popular uh, social media app, uh, has uh, will have, if this legislation passes, 180 days uh, to be divested from its Chinese owners, basically to find, and I don't know whether it's an American owner or an owner from some other, some country other than China. Tell us about the bill. It's a necessary element to taking on the greed of social media corporations. A lot of this is being framed as the United States versus China, and that's certainly an element of it. We don't want the Chinese Communist Party to control the algorithm that dominates so much of our political discourse. But actually, it's more about families and parents and children versus the greed of big tech. Because for the last 20 years now, increasingly, companies like Meta and Twitter and TikTok have been attention hacking American youth, monetizing their attention spans to sell them off to the highest bidder. They have been uh, corroding our political discourse. They have been platforming disinformation. And Congress needs to step up and regulate them. They need to behave like responsible elements of the American body politic. But we can't do that if these companies don't answer to U.S. law. So the first step to taking on the greed of big tech is to ensure that big tech answers to Congress, not Xi Jinping. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.